Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're uh, ready to go to Gulfstream Park for the big races of the week. Yeah, let's do it, Matt. This is uh, this is Pegasus Preview Day. Maybe the Pegasus World Cup is not what we thought it could be. Uh, four or five years ago, but uh, $3 million for the uh, Pegasus World Cup, $1 million for the Pegasus World Cup turf. There's still big races. We'll see if some of these horses running Saturday at Gulfstream, four stakes races, but specifically we're going to zero in on the Harlan's Holiday, which is a Pegasus World Cup prep race, and the Fort Lauderdale, which of course would go to the Pegasus World Cup turf. Without further ado, Matt, are you ready to roll? Let's go. Let's do it. Let's start with the dirt. We'll go with the Harlan's Holiday and uh, a pretty big field, Matt, a pretty wide open field. You can tell by those uh, uh, our Horse Center morning line odds that uh, there's lots of possibilities in here. So let's run through the field from the rail out, uh, Matt. And of course, Dub UNL is back. Three-year-old son of good magic. Uh, he was the Remsen winner last year. Yeah, he certainly was. Seemed like uh, uh, he might do some things on the uh, on the Derby Trail, um, but uh, subsequent to the Remsen, he really didn't uh, do particularly well. As as the competition got a little stiffer down in Florida, he ran in the, the Sam F. Davis. He ran in the Florida Derby, and pretty much was a no show uh, in, in those in those two races. But he uh, had time off. After that, six months off, and came back uh, at Oak at excuse me at Keeneland in October and registered a, a nice allowance win. So here we got WNL as a three-year-old uh, facing off against this, uh, as you described, well described, an evenly matched field. Yeah, WNL has to be considered an interesting horse at least. Uh, he, he's about to be four. Clearly, he did not run at all in those two stakes early, early in the year in Florida. But uh, that Keeneland return race was good. So uh, I don't think I can pick him here, but uh, I wouldn't be shocked on the other hand, nor would I be shocked by New York traffic, Matt. Six-year-old, about to be seven, son of cross traffic, the New York bred. I still remember that Haskell of about, what, three and three and a half years ago where he just missed running down Authentic, who, of course, was a... Uh, uh, Kentucky Derby winner, Matt, and New York traffic has been a classy horse. Uh, he had about a year off, but he came back pretty good this year. Yeah, he did. Uh, and, and, uh, it, it's important to note that, uh, he is a New York bred and, and maybe most of his best races aside from that Haskell that you're mentioning, and certainly of late have been against, uh, New York breads, but, we're talking about Safi Joseph as the trainer, and when he's running at Gulfstream Park, he seems to be at his best at his home base uh, uh, with Safi. So uh, we'll have to see. Recently, uh, New York Traffic was second in a state-bred stakes race at Aqueduct and was the winner of an allowance. I don't know. Right now, he seems to be, uh, to me, a kind of a – solid allowance horse yeah i i guess i still like him a little bit better than you he has been sprinting even uh, before the return and that that is a concern here if you're looking for him to run a big race but on the other hand i think it's worth noting that safi joseph also trains uh the number six horse o'connor and o'connor likes to rally new york traffic certainly has enough speed to be out there so it'll be interesting to see what New York traffic does in only his third race of the year. Grand Aspen, here's another lightly raced Todd Pletcher. We see this often. Sana dialed in. Uh, he, he, he's going to be five soon. He doesn't uh, have a lot of experience for his age, but he's looked good lately, especially last time, returning to dirt. In his last two races, he returned to dirt, and he's run two good races. Yes, absolutely. Two good races. Got a nice allowance win at Churchill in a first level allowance race. So uh, this uh, move to the Harlan's Holiday has to be looked at as a step up in class for uh, Grand Aspen. 
Yeah, yeah, he's he's a horse that could become something uh, something good, but uh, I think it's true for all three of the first three horses, Matt. They they need to prove something here, even though New York Traffic is is practically a millionaire. He still needs something, uh, needs to prove something here as he stretches out in a graded stake at Gulfstream Park. Number four, Blue Devil, kind of a sneaky good handicap horse, and Uncle Mo, another horse who's about to turn five. Uh, he is, uh, if, if you follow Kentucky racing, high priced allowance racing and some stakes races, he's been a pretty consistent performer here in Kentucky. Yeah. And, and I don't know if we can say that about many of the horses in this field, nice performances in a pair of grade two stakes at Churchill Downs. He was fourth in the Clark most recently and third in the Lucas classic so uh, um you know he, he seems to be in the right kind of level here in uh, in this grade three to go back and find his last win we have to go to a nice allowance win at saratoga yeah yeah he did well at saratoga this summer certainly a horse to watch especially his odds could creep up we have him at eight to one there so an interesting uh, horse is the number four uh, speaking of horses that still need to prove something, this time last year, I thought Signature could develop into something really good. Uh, things did not work out for Signature or the, the first half of the year, but the Sun of Tappet has come back with two wins at Aqueduct. Yeah, and we got to remember that Signature, as a two-year-old, was purchased for $1.7 million. So, uh, uh, you know, he, big things have always been expected from the son of Tappet, as you've mentioned, for Shug McGay. He, yeah, things, you know, he didn't live up to that, certainly in the beginning of his career, but he's got two nice allowance wins in a row at Aqueduct as he now makes his first start in a stakes race. Yeah, and, and this would be the time where a three-year-old, you know, we're, we're, we're to the point where he is basically an older horse now as we're just days away from him turning four. So Signature could be a horse to watch in the future. Big step up, though, on uh, Saturday at, at uh, Gulfstream Park. Number six is the horse we listed as the favorite. I'm not positive he'll be the favorite. It's the other Safi Joseph horse, O'Connor. O'Connor is a Chilean, Chilean bred uh, to be ridden by Tyler Gaffleone. And O'Connor's run a lot of good races. Uh, his first race in America, Matt, after being a Group 1 winner down in Chile, he uh, won by six lengths over a horse in the race. He won that allowance race at Gulfstream Park by six lengths over Octane. And he probably, you'd say, has been a little of a disappointment since then. But I think he's getting used to American racing, grounding it out, grinding it out. He was second in the Ghost Zapper early in the year, but he comes off a nice win last time. Yeah, nice win. Uh in the Fayette Stakes at uh, at Keeneland. Last year, he also ran in this Harlan's Holiday and was fourth uh, since he came over fr from, from Chile. Um, he is a three-time graded stakes place horse along with that win uh, at Keeneland. So, you know, probably with that resume, he is a, a, deserves to be the morning line favorite. Yeah, the win, the win alone last time in in the Fayette at Keeneland, that was a uh, a nice win where he won a three horse photo and he was moving best at the end. Uh, worth noting, you mentioned that he was in the Harlan's Holiday in fourth last year. He was the favorite in this race last year and was a little bit disappointing, but uh, he seems to be rounding into top form, about to be seven years old. Number seven is Octane Matt, and that's probably a good time to. Flick over to Timeform US. Uh, our friends over there have our pace projection of the Harlan's Holiday. And you'll see front and center out there on the lead is number seven, Octane, a horse who really likes this Gulfstream Park main track. Yeah, absolutely. I've got that in my notes, Brian. Uh, this is one of a few horses in this, uh, uh, in this field that's got a really fantastic record um, at Gulfstream Park and, and Octane. Octane is one of them. Six wins, three seconds, and a third from 13 career starts at Gulfstream Park. So this is certainly a classic horse uh, for course type horse in here. Um, recently came back from a four-month layoff 
to win a restricted stakes race for Florida breads at Gulfstream Park. Um, and as the pace projectors showing, I guess he's got a chance to get loose on the lead. Yeah, that would make him very interesting. I, I do go back to last year and, and it's been, I guess, over a full year now where O'Connor just blew his doors off in the stretch. But uh, if he can get that early lead, I, I think part of it depends on the staple made of uh, O'Connor, New York traffic, whether he wants to really press that pace or not. But other than him, yeah, Octane could be the speed of the race. And, and that makes him interesting along with that great record at Gulfstream Park you, you described. Another horse that interests me quite a bit here, Matt, is Miles D. Miles D, of course, was formerly trained by Chad Brown. And Miles D has run some good races for Chad Brown, but uh, he recently changed Barnes. And in fact, he's only made, uh, I believe it's just one start for the uh, for the new barn. And, and I'll tell you what, that Delta Mile might be a key race because uh, the winner and the third place horse now have both come back with uh, stakes wins out of that Delta Mile. Miles D ran a very good race for his new barn last time. Yeah, and Miles D is is an interesting horse, as you said, ran for Chad Brown and, and uh, showed a good bit of promise. Maybe this horse goes into the category of some of the other horses we've mentioned in this field that still has something to prove that maybe quite hasn't lived up to uh, uh, what was expected from a horse that back in 2021 was third in the Travers. Yeah, the son of Curlin certainly was uh, an interesting, lightly raced three-year-old that summer. You're right, he didn't live up to it. But maybe now in a new barn, he's he's got a chance to uh, to move up and prove, like I said, look good last time at Delta Downs. Number nine is another horse I think will get bet. And part of it, of course, for Cat Gasoline, another son of Curlin, is the Todd Pletcher, Irad Ortiz Jr. angle. But uh, maybe at Gulfstream, that's not as big an angle as it would be in New York. Gasoline was uh, well-respected last time in the Clark, uh, but was pretty disappointing with the fifth, but before the, with a fifth-place finish. But before that, he was looking good, really good in Allowance Company. Yeah, and, and I think uh, he, was, uh, he was that short price in the Clark based on, those, on a pair of two really nice allowance wins uh, at Churchill Downs which came after a pretty long seven month layoff. Uh, so yeah, I think that Clark performance was a little bit disappointing. And again, another horse uh, in this field that's flashed some potential, but you know, uh, hasn't quite lived up to that and has something to prove in this grade three race. I, I agree. I think he could move forward in the, uh, from the Clark performance, but uh, as the potential second choice, you got to wonder, is he really good enough to win a race like this? Number 10 is Steel Sunshine. I think he's a sneaky horse here, Matt. Son of Constitution is a two-time stakes winner. You were talking about good records at Gulfstream Park. This is another horse who has a good record over the track. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, four, four wins, two seconds, three-thirds out of 12 career starts uh, in at Gulfstream Park. Another horse that, you know... But if you go back in your in his past performances, you'll find a, a a really nice race in a you know in a graded stakes for Steel Sunshine. That was a third place finish in the Island at Monmouth Park, and recently has a nice allowance win at Gulfstream Park back in October. Yeah, and, and if you go back a little farther, of course, that uh, third place finish. Uh, it, at Monmouth Park was uh, uh, this summer, but uh, uh, going back last year when he was a three-year-old, uh, he won races like the Ellis Park Derby and the Carryback at Gulfstream Park. So uh, an interesting horse to me, and I really like uh, the race he's coming out of last time, Gulfstream Park's allowance win. And uh, with so many horses to bet, I, I would expect good odds on the 10 Steel Sunshine. Lure him in is the 11, Matt, and I, I have a feeling he's going to be the longest shot on the board on Saturday. Yeah, but once again, here's a horse that uh, has a nice allowance win at Gulfstream Park recently and is another one that loves the Gulfstream surface with four wins from six starts. Yeah, uh, lure him in, Steel Sunshine and Octane, maybe especially Octane. 
love uh, love to win at Gulfstream Park, but this might be their toughest race that they've had at Gulfstream Park. So, you know, you you, you certainly appreciate the uh, uh, good record over the track, but this will be a test for all three horses who have compiled very good records at Gulfstream Park. All right, now we're going to switch from the main track to the green, the grass, the turf. Uh, Pegasus World Cup Turf, which is a $1 million race. This will be the prep. This is the Fort Lauderdale. This is actually grade two, uh, a little bit higher on the grade scale than the grade three Harlan's Holiday, mile 16th on the dirt. The Fort Lauderdale will be nine furlongs on the turf. And this is a race where we like to cash some money, Matt. Let's take a look at this field on the turf. And again, we have a pretty good sized field. This one's 10. Uh, number one, I, the first thing I see, this English bred Marwad. Matt uh, will be ridden by Oisin Murphy, and Oisin Murphy is a very good jockey over in Europe, or has been a very good jockey over there, and now he's uh, he's going to be riding in the winter at Gulfstream Park. Interesting jockey for the one, and, and maybe an interesting horse, the son of Intello. Yeah, and again, I, I you know I think uh, we might have similar uh, rundown here in the. Uh, Fort Lauderdale with a field that that's pretty wide open with a field of horses. A lot of them have flashed some good races, but have things to prove. Starting off here with uh, 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 with with Marwad uh, recently was ninth in the Red Smith in New York and sixth in an allowance that came after a long layoff a seven month seven month layoff so he hasn't bounced back from that break very well but prior to that was second at in gulfstream park in a grade two uh uh on the turf in the mac de Armida. yeah the mac mac Dermida performance early this year would think that he has a shot in here and of course that came at gulfstream park Number two is Grand Sonata. Grand Sonata is a horse I've kind of enjoyed betting over the last few years. He's He doesn't do quite enough to be the favorite in these races, but he often runs well. Doesn't always win, but he often runs well for trainer Todd Pletcher. Uh, he's had some nice performances again this year as a four-year-old. Yes, absolutely, Brian. Four-year-old um, has a fourth uh, in the River City, which is a grade three, the sixth in the grade one turf classic uh this summer won an allowance race at saratoga and looking at his record on the grass at gulfstream park he is two for two yeah that 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 i saw that too matt that interests me especially with all the good horses he's run against in, especially in new york and uh, like you said that's saratoga allowance win points him out last time in the river city the graded river city at churchill downs beaten less than three lengths we have him at six to one. I, I'm not really sure uh, how high or how low he'll go, but I have a feeling you'll get good value on a horse because, again, just like the other race you said, this this is uh, a lot of interesting horses, including the three. The other Pletcher, Jerry the Nipper, uh, kind of like we were talking with the Safi Joseph horses. Here's a nice New York bred Matt, uh, son of Liam's map, who is run. Um, many good stakes races uh, against New York breads and those New York bread turf races up there are good stakes races. And he's always knocking on the door. Yep. Always knocking on the door as a, as a current six year old, six year old most recently was sixth in the open company, Artie Schiller. Um, but as he has run well against New York breads and has two allowance wins recently. Yeah, yeah, good form. Uh, as much as any horse in the field, probably Jerry the Nipper has some solid, consistent good form. It's just a matter of winning a race like this. Let's take a look at the time form. U.S. Pace Projector now, Matt, because the next horse on our list is Main Event. Main Event looks to be, to me, the speed of the race, uh, trained by our friend George Weaver, the son of Bernardini, has, uh, has been another pretty solid turf performer over the years. He was uh, uh, performed well last summer at Delaware, I remember, in the grade three Kent, um, coming in with good form, coming from New York. Yeah, and he was a winner of that Kent uh, grade three uh, at Delaware Park, recent winner of an allowance race at Aqueduct in November before uh, turf racing ended for the winter. Um, uh, and... I don't care any kind of race speed is always dangerous and according to the pace projector 
this this guy has a chance of getting loose on the lead. Yeah, yeah. If he's uh, if he's alone and left alone, he becomes very dangerous. He's not one of my top horses in here, but uh, you got to recognize the other horses we've already talked about are the closest to him. Jerry the Nipper and Grand Sonata on the pace projector. But uh, if main event has things easy, watch out. Another horse to watch out for is the five. You'll see him back in mid pack on the pace projector. But uh, number five is King Max, the son of Kingman. And uh, the Irish bread is now trained by uh, Jorge Delgado, Matt. King Max looked so good uh, this summer at Monmouth Park. You got to wonder what he was beating. But uh, he looked good in his two, his only two turf races in, in, in North America. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, two nice allowance wins at Monmouth Park on the turf uh, since coming over to, to America. But he has now been off since July. And I don't know, this may be a tough spot to come in from with a, you know, a, a six months or so layoff. Yeah. And, and that last one was on the uh, all weather surface at uh, Woodbine and he didn't run poorly, but uh, looking at those turf races and looking back at his European form, I, I cannot help but be a little afraid of King Max, the number five. Number six is a horse who should get some money. Fort Washington is one of those consistent Shug McGahee trained turf ralliers. It, it seems like Shug's horses like to rally on the grass, and Fort Washington is no different. Maybe Louis Saez, who's known as a pretty active uh, uh, jockey early in the race, can keep Fort Washington in the race. He's another horse who's a threat in here. Yeah, he has had a tendency in most of his races, races, Brian, to get very far behind, and that always makes uh, that always makes things tough. But it was more encouraging in uh, an allowance weight race at Aqueduct this fall that he won. That he was kept a lot closer to the pace and won that for more of a stalking position. And I agree with uh, uh, an aggressive rider like Luis Saez, we can probably expect them to uh, employ that same strategy in here. Yeah, a good allowance company. He just missed two starts back. And as Matt says, a little bit closer to the pace when he got up and won last time in allowance company, but good allowance company. So Fort Washington, certainly one of the ones to think about, especially maybe if you're playing underneath in the exotics. Uh, I'm pretty sure Chad Brown will have the favorite in the Fort Lauderdale. Finally, we get to talk about Chad Brown. I'm not sure which one of Chad Brown runners will be the favorite, Matt, but one of them should be the favorite. The seven is Stone Age, and Stone Age, son of Galileo, he has run in a lot of big races. He's run a lot of very good races, but then he has a lifetime record of two of 17. Yeah, absolutely. And he has, you know, he has knocked heads in some of the best turf races in the country, uh, uh, has a pair of fifth place finishes in the turf classic and the sword dancer, but continuing in some big races, he has run, he has run really well as a three-year-old. He was a close third in the Belmont Derby and that second set that same year was second in the Breeders' cup turf last year blinkers go on blinkers go on uh johnny v is up uh but on the other hand this is a nine furlong race and stone age hasn't run anything short of a mile and a half in a long time yeah i i had him as a long shot in that breeders cup turf last year and i was thrilled he was second uh but it, it, distance is distance is very interesting blinkers on is interesting johnny v uh, uh, riding is very interesting. Stone Age, certainly a threat. Probably the classiest horse in the race. Well, I'll go and say it not the classiest horse in the race off that second in the Breeders' Cup turf last year. Number eight, Red Run, Mike Maker. You got to watch out sometimes for Mike Maker. He's got two in here as well. Red Run has run a bunch of good rallying races. A little bit disappointing, though, last time in the River City where he was... Uh, uh, pretty far behind Grand Sonata. I guess it, by, by lengths, he wasn't pretty far behind, but he finished eighth. Grand Sonata was fourth, and that was a good race at Churchill Downs. Yeah, and before that, he was fourth uh, in the grade three uh, Sycamore. He's got a, a allowance win at Churchill Downs and is often the case with uh, 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 horses that 
Mike Baker has claimed. He usually only claims horses for big tags, and that was the case with Red Run, who Maker picked up for fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Red Run is a horse I can't put in my top uh, grouping. But on the other hand, I wouldn't be shocked if he runs a very good race. Number nine is the other Chad Brown. I rat Ortiz will be on this one. And running B, uh, without a doubt, the best American turf sire of the last 10 years is English Channel. And running B is the son of English Channel. He's only had six lifetime races. He had a year between uh, uh, two starts back and his last start. But they both were very nice wins. Running B still could be any kind. Yeah, any kind is going to be uh, forwardly pl placed in this field and uh, uh, probably with the choice of a, a number of horses, uh, Irad Ortiz shows up on running B. Yeah, running, running B interests me quite a bit. And we'll go back to that pace projector real quick where we saw main event and then Jerry the Nipper, Grant Sonata. They had running B alone on the outside, kind of in fourth, uh, battling for third a little bit. I could easily see running B being a little bit more forwardly paid placed than we see on the pace projector, Matt. And that could make him an even more interesting candidate here in the Fort Lauderdale. Number 10 is a long shot, Henley's Joy. Henley's Joy, though, is son of Kitten's Joy. If you go back into his past performances, well back, there's a lot of class. There's a lot of back class there. He's a millionaire, Matt. He's a, he's a stakes winner. He's a multiple graded stakes placed on the grass. You got to look at the trainer too, because this will be his second start, his first start on turf for, for trainer Mike Maker. Yeah, son of Kitten's Joy. Uh, but if you if you look at all that information, you got to notice that this horse has not won a race in over two years. Exactly. And, and that's why he's a long shot. And that's why he'll have big odds here on Saturday. But if Mike Maker can work a little bit of his magic with a horse who used to be in this class, maybe a potential long shot that can run. All right, Matt, it's time to make our top picks for these Pegasus preview day uh, stakes. Uh, again, Gulfstream has four, two for the Phillies. We talked about the two real preview races. I'm going to let you go first, and you'll start with the Harlan's Holiday, please, Matt. Absolutely. I think we got four different horses from you for you folks, uh, which uh, I certainly uh, – it is no surprise with the wide open nature of these races. Uh, I'm, I, I, I've got to look at horses that seem to have better prices. And in the Harlan's Holiday, for me, that is going to be Octane. I like the, I like his record at Gulfstream Park. I like his comeback victory after a layoff, and I like that this horse has got speed. Yeah, and you like the time form U.S. pace projector where he was actually alone on the lead. If it happens, watch out for Octane. By the way, I feel I think it's an interesting development with Octane and Gasoline in the same race, but that's uh, <laughs> I, I digress a little bit. But yeah, Octane, 6 of 13, so many good performances at Gulfstream. I went with another horse who might have, should have even bigger odds and also likes Gulfstream. Steel Sunshine, I thought was a very nice three-year-old last year. Been a little bit in and out this year, but his win at Gulfstream Park in his last race really impressed me. And I just don't think there's a standout in this field. So I'm with you and picking some odds here. I'm going to go for Steel Sunshine and hope he's 12, 15 to 1 in the Harlan's Holiday over a track that we know he likes. Uh, the next one is the turf, the Fort Lauderdale, grade two, nine furlongs. Who you got, Matt? Yeah, again, I, 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 I'm maybe not going with as long a shot as I did in the Ireland's holiday, but I am going to put Grand Sonata on top. Uh, hopefully, uh, he can uh, use that experience that he's had in uh, in graded stakes races. Again, I like the fact that he's won both of his races on the turf course at Gulf Stream Park, which is a little bit of a different kind of sandy based golf uh, turf course than other uh, uh, grass courses around the country. So Grand Sonata for me. Yeah, Grand Sonata will be a horse that's on my tickets, Matt. Grand Sonata, I'm hoping his odds are, are pretty good too. Even though it's a wide open race, I, I, I honestly, I, the two horses I really do like best are Chad Brown and Chad Brown. Uh, 
Stone Age is a horse who it just doesn't seem to want to win. And dropping in distance, I'm, I wasn't going to pick Stone Age, but I certainly could see him running a pretty big race in here. But running B, I just, I, 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 he just has that look of a typical Chad Brown getting good, uh, getting good all of a sudden. <laughs> and it's kind of strange to say all of a sudden, but he had a year off and he's only had one race recently. And it was a big performance. I think he'll be out there close to the lead early. I just think he's the most likely winner. I, I went long shot in the Harlands Holiday the Fort Lauderdale, I might be on the favorite if it's not the other Chad Brown. All right, Matt, that's our uh, Pegasus preview show. Let me get a parting shot from you before we head out. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Uh, um, good luck to everybody uh, at Gulfstream Park. Enjoy the the card there. Other stakes races, big fields, uh, uh, night, the nice warm weather. We And as always, we really appreciate you watching the show. Yeah, I agree with Matt. We really appreciate you watching the show. Uh, turn on those notifications. If you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that. Uh, thank you. We appreciate you watching. Leave a comment, too, if, if you're so inclined. We always like in, uh, enjoy to read those. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there as our sponsor. And, of course, those pace projections from Timeform US are greatly appreciated. Folks, have a very happy New Year. Matt and I uh, uh, both uh, want you to enjoy the coming year, 2024. Maybe we'll uh, have something good in these wide open, good betting races on Saturday at Gulfstream Park. Until next week, for another additional Horse Center, we'll, uh, we'll wish you good luck and we'll see you then.